you want to sell on eBay, Amazon and Shopify or you want to start any kind of online side hustle in 2023, in this particular video, I'm going to explain each and everything that you need to know about being a sole trader or being a limited company or how you pay tax as a sole trader. How much tax do you pay as a limited company? Do you pay VAT or you don't pay VAT? So everything you need to know in a simple, basic words. By the end of the video you will have a complete understanding and you will be able to make the better and tax saving decision for yourself as well so let's get started whenever we start any kind of business online or offline let's say selling on ebay selling on amazon shopify whatever the business is at the end of the day it is our legal responsibility to get the proper registration done and pay the tax on it if we don't do it at the end of the day we're gonna be receiving a money inside the paypal we're gonna be receiving the money inside the bank account and HMRC is really clever nowadays and it takes them no time to actually find out and nowadays people are receiving a really really heavy fines because they haven't done a registration properly so normally once we need to do the registration we have a two option either we can go as a sole trader or we can go as a limited companies there are pros and cons to both of them and I have a short presentation which I will actually show you so you will be able to make a better decision for yourself and then obviously i will talk about how the tax is going to work because it's entirely going to depend on either you are a limited company or you are a sole trader so first of all we have a liabilities protection right here a lot of people do not understand that once you are a sole trader then everything is under your own name you are not a separate entity your business and you as a person is the same thing all the money that you're going to be receiving it is going to be under your name. Any loan you're going to take, it is going to be under your name. So anything can happen, then the, the institution where you own the money or something, let's say, happen, the people will actually come after you. Where you are a limited company, limited companies are considered as a separate entity. So it's a separate institution. It's a separate identity that you form for your business. So all the liabilities are actually on a limited company. So when it comes to liabilities, I always say if you are somebody who is don't want to be liable for those kind of things as well, the best option for you is to go for is a limited company. But as a sole trader, that's not the best option if you are a sole trader at the end of the day as well. The next thing that we have is easy to set up. Which one is easy to start, easy to set up, easy to get going, how to set those two things up as well. That's what I want to talk about as well. Nowadays, to be honest with you, limited companies are very easy to set up as well. And the way if you need to set up a limited company, there are the companies like Awesome, they only charge you 12 pound it literally charge you only 12 pound and they do all the registration for you they even get you a business bank account as well and if you do it by yourself as well you can go to hmrc website and it's again going to cost you 12 pound as well so why not just give 12 pound to awesome and they will do each and everything it only costs you 12 pound so when it comes to easy to set up it is very easy to set up a limited company and if you need to set up being a sole trader it is also very simple simple. So all you have to do is go to HMRC website and the number that you're going to need is called UTR number, which is a unique tax reference number. And then by the end of financial year, HMRC will send you a letter where you need to do your tax return. So both of them are very fairly easy to set up at the end of the day as well. Now, the next one that we have is a business bank account. The thing with the business bank account, if you are a limited company, again, I said, because limited companies are considered as a separate entity, you need to keep that money separately. So you're going to need a business bank account. But again, I said with the awesome, they actually get the business bank account for you within 12 pound as well. But if you are a sole trader, HMRC allow you to keep the money inside your personal account, which 
I personally, even if you are using your personal account, I will create another account and I will keep that money separately because at the end of the day, anything that you're going to be paying for your work or any money that you're going to be receiving from your work, it's going to be all in the same account. So at the end of the day, once you need to do your tax return, everything going to be really, really simple as well. So for a sole trader, you don't really need a business bank account, but as a limited company, it is a legal responsibility to have that money separate from your own personal money. So you're going to need a business bank account, but awesome can get you that one as well. So that's not really a problem. The next thing that we have is a privacy. I would say once you are a sole trader, then how much money you are making, your name, your address, business, all that kind of stuff is going to stay private. Nobody can find that out on a public website. But once you are a limited company, anybody can go on a company house and they can check, okay, who own uh, XYZ Limited? Who is the director of that? They can see their tax return. They can see what other companies they actually own as well. So once you're a sole trader, the things are a little bit more private, but once you are a limited company, then everything is going to stay public. This is something to keep in mind. What a lot of people do right here, let's say you wanna go for a limited company and you don't want your personal address to be shown publicly, then a lot of institution, a lot of banks nowadays, they offer a virtual address as well. So you can actually use a virtual address. A lot of bigger companies nowadays, they are completely using those virtual address. They are not so expensive as well. So if you decided to go for a limited company, the virtual address can be the option for you if you don't want to show your personal address as well. But again, this is the pros and cons you have to keep in mind. The next thing we have is easy to scale. And this is very important if you are selling on eBay, Amazon, whatever, because if you are a limited company, it is going to be very easy to scale and also sell the business. But if you are a sole trader, a lot of like at some time you need to have an exit plan from your business. You need to sell your business. Let's say you want to get retired. If you always been a sole trader, then the buyers don't like that. If you've been a limited company, then you have more options as well. If you need to hire people, it is easier to manage as a limited company as compared to being a sole trader as well. But most important thing you want to keep in mind, especially somebody who want to sell on Amazon. At one point, Amazon will ask you to register a limited company. So from the first day, I advise anybody who want to sell on eBay, Amazon, go for a limited company option because later down in the line, let's say you order all the stock, you order all the inventory, you order each and everything. And then you realize, okay, well, now Amazon is going to ban my account because I haven't have done the registration for my limited company. This is because they want to deal with a proper institution once it comes to dealing with Amazon or eBay as well. Now being tax effective, you know, it is really going to depend on at what level your companies are. But I would say, to be honest with you, you get more tax benefit and tax savings if you are a limited company. This might be very arguable nowadays, which I will tell you because there are major changes will be happening in 2023. So that might be something you have to keep in mind as well once you are going through a limited company route. But as a sole trader, at the end of the day, I will come down to this part. You will understand more when I will explain how the tax is going to work as well. But just to make it short, limited companies are normally considered as more tax effective. Sole trader is not the most most tax effective way to run a business as well. The last thing, this is majorly, majorly important at the end of the day. You know, if you are a limited company, it is a very professional way to run a business. As a sole trader, not so much. And why this is important, I will explain later down in the video that you need to actually pay salary to yourself. You will understand further down in the line in the video when I will talk about how the tax is going to work. But let's say you need to apply for the mortgage for your bank. And once you're paying a salary for your from your company, you are paying yourself a salary. Then if you need to apply for the loan, it is going to be the easier process because for the mortgage, the lenders who are going to borrow you the money, 
they want to see everything transparent right there as well and they would prefer somebody who is paying regular salary from the business each and every month so the professionalism with the limited company is also something you need to keep in mind in short i will say you want to sell on ebay and amazon being a limited company offer you more benefits but being a sole trader uh you know even though it might seems very easy at the end of day i think sole trader might not be the best option as well now let's talk about how the tax is going to work if you are a limited company or if you are as a sole trader now i hope you understand the difference between both of them and you can make a better decision for yourself so as a sole trader once we get our registration done couple of things we need to keep in mind that as soon you start trading as soon i would say even you have a intention to sell online you actually call hmrc or you can come actually right here on the hmrc website i will leave the link for that inside the description you need to get your utr number which is called unique tax reference number and that normally they send it to you within 10 working days by letter as well and they will also send you the reminder to do your tax return once your tax is going to be due the tax is normally paid for tax year tax year is different than a normal year so year 2023 we would say financial year 2023 and financial year 2024 so let's say for example i was you know last year financial year 2022 and financial year 2023 that actually started from the 6th of april 2022 and it's gonna end on 5th of april 2023 so that any money which i'm gonna make during this particular time with from 6th of april 2022 to 5th of april 2023 i'm gonna pay the tax for that after when this financial year is ended so now if we are in financial year 2023 and 2024 which started from you know 6th of april 2023 and it's gonna end on the 5th of april 2024 i'm gonna be paying tax after 5th of april 2024 so you trade you sell throughout the year and when the financial year i would say financial year that's why i would like to you know let you know about this terminology when the financial year end after we pay the tax on that so keep this in mind a lot of people actually make these things confused as well but there are two types of tax that we normally pay as a sole trader number one is an income tax and the second one is a national insurance number the income tax is going to depend on how much money you're gonna make you know and also national insurance number which is normally nine percent i will give you one example also which gonna make your life really really easy i know it can be a little bit confusing as well but you will understand with the example so first of all let's say we come down right here right everybody have a, a personal allowance which is 12,570. What does that mean? That any money that you're going to make up to 12,570, you're going to pay 0% tax on that one. But if you go over 12,571, you to 50,270 you're gonna pay 20% and then 50,271 to 150 you're gonna pay 40% and anything over you're gonna you're gonna make 150,000 you're gonna pay 45% tax on this one right here as well but again I will give you an example which will make your life really really easy to understand but personal allowance and tax year you need to keep this in mind so let's open up our calculator just to give you some hypothetical number just to give you a rough idea at the end of day as well so let's say in financial year 2023 2024 you made 30,000 pound this is your sale this is your turnover you know you haven't deducted any expenses from 30,000 pound let's say you have a cost so for example the stock cost for example postage cost for example the fee that you paid to ebay and amazon all those costs are actually deductible first of all you're gonna deduct that cost from your sales so let's say that was 10,000 pound again this is a hypothetical number just to give you some example now you are left with 20,000 pound this is your profit from the business now you need to pay tax on twenty thousand pound because everybody get the personal 
uh, allowance as well, which is 12,570 at the time when I'm recording this video, this number actually changed as well. So we need to deduct that because we don't pay any tax on this particular money as well. Now I'm going to left with the 7,430 pound on 7,430 pound because this is within this tax bracket right here. Don't make it confused because we already deducted the personal allowance but our profit was actually 20,000 so it actually falls within this tax bracket we deducted 12,570 because this is our personal allowance we pay zero tax on this one so we deduct that we are left with this 7,470 so I'm gonna be paying 20% income tax on this one and then I'm gonna be paying 9% national insurance number on these one right here and this is all the tax that you pay once you are a sole trader so the basic thing you got your full sale from the sale you deduct the expenses then you deduct your personal allowance sometime that number can go in the negative as well let's say you have you haven't made any profit it can be in the negative as well so then depending on how much profit you are left with you're gonna apply the national insurance uh, number 9% and income tax, which depending on it is 20 or it is 35 or it is 45, whatever it is at the end of the day as well. So this is how you're going to pay tax as a, a sole trader. Now there is a different scenario because a lot of people are a sole trader and also they have a job at the same time as well. So in that scenario, let's say you are making 30,000 pound from the business, same thing, you're going to need to deduct your expenses expenses that going to be 10,000 a hypothetical number again now you are left with the 20,000 pound profit with this one now you have a job you are getting pay slips as well so the things with the job once we get a pay slips we are paying tax on a monthly basis that's not the case once we are obviously running a business as i explained earlier we pay the tax at the end of the financial year so within particular financial year you have to combine the income from your job before tax and you need to combine the income from your business and then do rest of the calculations this is how it is going to work at the end of day because you need to combine that income as well sometime what happened once we let's say you know again just to give you one example you are with the a 20,000 pound profit from the business and your job is paying you, let's say 40,000, right? So now we are making 60,000. Obviously, now we are not in a 20% tax bracket. We are in a 40% tax bracket. But a lot of people think, oh my God, now all of the sudden I'm going to be paying 40% tax on all of my income. No. So now the way it works here, obviously first, again, you're going to need to deduct your personal allowance income which is less than 50,000 so that one again going to be classed as 20% tax you're going to you're going to pay you're going to have to pay on that one how much you are over uh, 50,000 at this point you are over just a hypothetical number let's say 10,000 you know here in the 60,000 example only the income which is above this 50,000 270 that is only going to class at 40 percent tax anything lower than that it's again going to be at 20 percent you're not paying 40 percent on all income all of the sudden just because you are in a higher rate now so this is something to keep in mind as well but here i always recommend you know have an accountant awesome is a really really good choice especially for the e-commerce which i will talk about at the end of the video as well so when it comes to tax on a limited company limited companies are separate entity so the way you actually pay yourself as a director and i will come down to i will give you example you normally pay yourself a salary which is also a deductible expense as well i will explain you with example again it will make your life very very easy as well but limited company don't pay national insurance number that's a, a bigger advantage of having a limited company the only tax they pay is a corporation tax and corporation tax is going to be increased from april 2023 depending on your profits of a limited company currently it's 19 percent and again, depending on where you are, it could be 19%. But if you are more, here I am on the HMRC website right here. So this is a recent change which happened. And this is, you know, 
a lot of people are panicking because of this one as well so currently 19% is a, a corporation tax rate as well but they say the beginning of 1st april 2023 now the corporation tax will be from 19% to it's gonna go to 25% but it only gonna be applying to the companies who are making a profit over 250,000 that they will pay 25% but if you are a company who is making less than 50,000 in the terms of profit you're gonna continue to pay 19% corporation tax somewhere between 50,000 to 250,000 you gonna the tax rate is gonna be reduced by the marginal relief you know that really depends on at what number you are so less than fifty thousand, you pay 19 percent at this point but if you go over two hundred and fifty thousand, you pay 25 percent if you are in between fifty thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand, that is gonna be the marginal tax as well coming back to our example of let's say making uh, a thirty thousand pounds so i'm gonna open my calculator right here just to give you one example how this is going to work so let's say your limited company made 30,000 in the terms of sales now again same money with the a sole trader as well now first of all you're going to deduct your expenses so we're going to deduct again 10,000 pound just to keep the thing simple as well and now you are left with the 20,000 pound profit but this is not only your one expense obviously you deducted your postage cost stock cost all that kind of stuff as well but once you are a limited company again i said it's a separate entity so the director of a limited company is also paying themselves a salary so what most of the director do because they know this is also a deductible expense from a company they only pay themselves a salary under the income tax threshold you know so up to 12,570 because they know they're going to be paying zero percent tax on that one so as a director what most of people do they only pay themselves up to 12,570 and they deduct that from a limited company as an expense as well because this is also a deductible expense so you have 12,570 now you are left with 7,430 pound just like as a sole trader but the difference on 7,430 this 7430 is sitting inside a limited company still that is not your personal you know what i mean so on this 7470 rather than paying 20 percent tax and 9 percent national insurance number because this money is sitting inside a limited company you only pay this one doesn't apply you only pay 19 percent corporation tax once you have paid 19 percent corporation tax that that money after the 19% is inside the limited company. Now you need to take out that money and pay it to yourself. And that what most of the people do that they pay themselves as a dividends from the company. So the way the tax work on the dividends, first of all, and this is how it becomes tax effective, that if you are paying up to 2000, again, you take another 2000 from a company and pay to yourself on the top of the salary. And again, you pay 0% tax on that but no national insurance number no income tax you're not paying anything like that now but after that one of course you have to pay tax or the dividends as well once you take a dividends but the tax or dividends is actually these are the rates or the dividends tax right here so this is going to be just 8.75 so as compared to where you have 29% tax if you are a sole trader, this is where in the limited company, first you take in a tax-free salary, then you took another 2000 in the terms of dividends as well. That's also tax-free. And then on the rest of the money, you're not paying 29%, you are paying almost 27.75 there is a little difference but again you took 2000 you took a salary as well and again you are saving in the terms of tax that you were able to save as a limited company note so this is how you actually take the money out of a limited company and you take yourself pay yourself a salary and uh, you pay yourself a dividends and then the corporation tax is just 19 percent hope does that make sense that's why a lot of company directors they go through a limited company route as well now let's say you have a job and you are director of a limited company at the same time 
with the job obviously you're getting your pay slips every single month so you are paying tax on a monthly basis because that's how it works once you are working for someone but as a business as i mentioned you do your tax return almost after a one year so whenever your limited company tax are due at the end of day as well so because you are using your personal allowance with your job then taking a salary out of the company might not be the better option you might just have to pay yourself in a terms of dividends so depending on how much money you are making from a full time job how much money is left over inside your limited company after you pay corporation tax you need to see what will be the most effective way so this is here sitting down with our accountant and every personal circumstances are different so figuring out what's the best way it entirely going to depend on your personal circumstances now let's talk about vat and this is super important to understand as well because there are different types of vat as well and i know this getting a lot complicated but i am hoping that i'm making the things simple enough for you to understand so most of the vat which we need to keep in mind is going to be your sales vat if we go to hmrc website then sales vat will apply to any business either you are a sole trader or you are a limited company once your sale will go once your sale not your profit your sale your turnover if it's go over 85000 in 12 rolling months so in 12 month if you are hoping that your sale will go over 85000 you need to pay vat this is not within the financial year this is 12 rolling month that's what you need to keep in mind so even if you are let's say your sale this month is 10000 you know that this is going to go over 85000 you need to get registration done for vat and start paying vat which is a 20 20% as well that's the vat you have to pay as a sole trader or as a limited company now what a lot of people get confused with they will say okay well at this currently my sale is less than 85000 why am i paying vat when the ebay is charging me a fee or i'm buying something they are charging me a fee or when i'm buying something from china they are charging me a fee as well so let's say once you buy something from another country it is coming to uk you're going to have to pay import vat on that one the import vat is not a sales vat everybody pays that import vat regardless you are a vat registered or you're not vat registered and a lot of people ask me i'm going to need to buy something from china do i need to have a vat registration oh, no you don't need to have a vat registration once you are buying something that vat you are paying as a consumer so let's say we go to asda we buy something if you look at the receipt always i got one from tasco right here if you look at the receipt they are always charging you vat as a consumer so asda is a company who is a vat registered because their sale is over 85000 but as a consumer i don't need to have a vat registration done in order for me to pay vat so once i pay import vat i don't need to have a vat registration once you're going to receive a invoice from amazon or ebay where they charge you fee they also going to charge you vat once you buy the postage from a royal mail or any other company they also going to charge you vat even though you are not vat registered because they are also a business and they are charging you vat to you as you are a consumer same thing which you going to charge your customer if your sale will go over 85000 i hope does that make sense so the vat registration only need to be done if you are making in the terms of sale over 85000 underneath that one you don't need to get the vat registration done you don't need to charge vat to your customer as a business if you are under 85000 but as a consumer or a different different things you're going to be paying vat like import vat or you know you pay a, a vat on the fee or the stock that you buy you pay vat because that particular company or a business is a vat registered and you are paying a vat as a consumer but for that one you don't need a vat number so i hope all of these things get clear as well at the end of day i tell you something i'm not a accountant you know at the end these are the matters should be handled by professional accountant as well so the one i use is a company
company called Osub. The reason I use Osub because they are specialized when it comes to e-commerce. So they have a software which can link with your Amazon account, which can link with your bank account, and you see all the sales and profit all at one place as well. And everything will be automated, so you don't need to do anything manually. At the end of the when you need to pay your tax, either a limited company or a sole trader, they do it that for you as well. So if you need some kind of help, you need to ask them some questions. They have a live chat support. You know, you can use the link inside the description, get the registration done. It only costs you twelve pound. If you decide to go, you want to have their services for the full time. Then depending on what level you are, how much is your turnover, and that's the thing which I like about them. If you are in the beginning of business, then they charge you less money, but as you grow, they grow with you as well. So I will leave the link for the awesome insider description. Ever since I started with Awesome, everything is so simple, and you save a lot of time at the end of day as well. So check the link for inside them inside the description. I'm gonna link one video right here that is also going to be really useful.